all right my dear children now we go to the topic important topic under uh, related to the ideal gas and this topic is even important uh, related to the topic called kinetic theory of gases and this is equation of state for an ideal gas how we simply call as ideal gas equation okay or perfect gas equation now the study of gases especially the study of gases so that volume pressure and temperature of a given mass of gas are always interrelated to each other that's why remember this children for gas for gases the three important parameter the volume the volume which is marked by letter b the pressure the pressure okay which is marked by letter p and the temperature which is marked by letter what t so these are three important parameter which are always interrelated to each other okay and especially when we talk about the ideal gas or perfect gas okay so the relation between volume pressure and temperature okay uh, can be expressed by a equation and this equation is called ideal gas equation also called perfect gas equation but this equation can be derived or can be expressed by combining two laws two laws as i said two laws are nothing but the boyle's law boyle's law and charles law and i know children that you have learned in details about this two law in class 9 in class 9 and you know when we talk about the thermodynamics that you have learned the gases are also called a system gas can be considered a system and the system is also comprises by the coordinate and this coordinate are called thermodynamic coordinates like volume pressure temperature are also called thermodynamic push coordinate if i consider gas as a what system in thermodynamics okay so the relation between the pressure this pressure one of the important parameter of gas volume another parameter and temperature another parameter of a given mass of a gas a given mass of gas and this gas is basically what gas we take ideal gas a theoretical consideration gas or imaginary gas is also called as ideal gas equation okay what gas equation ideal gas equation now we are going to derive the ideal gas equation Okay. Now to derive this ideal gas equation, okay. Now we combine two laws. As I said, one is called Boyle's law, another is called what law? Charles law. Now in order to derive the relation, uh, let me consider a gas. Suppose there is a gas, and this is what gas? Ideal gas. Okay. Now this gas acquire a initial pressure. Now I consider that initial pressure is say P one. Acquire initial volume. original volume also called initial volume b1 and i call initial temperature that initial temperature is what t1 now i consider let okay p1 comma b1 and what t1 are the what these are the initial pressure okay initial what pressure comma initial volume initial volume and this is volume and initial what temperature initial temperature of an what gas of an ideal gas initial temperature what gas ideal gas okay now i consider that this gases this particular gas will change into what the final pressure so this gas will change into uh, a final pressure that is p2 and final temp volume that is b2 and final temperature which is what t2 that means if all the parameter okay of this gas like volume pressure and temperature it changes from b1 to b2 p1 to p2 and t1 to what t2 then then we can divide this change which takes place from this particular gas from initial to final in two different parts two different what parts two different part means by combining both the laws as i said both the law one is called boyle's law another is what charles law and children you have learned in detail in class 9 when we state boyle's law the boyle's law stated only when it give the relation between pressure and volume when temperature remaining constant and when we state charles law charles law give the statement between volume and temperature when the pressure remaining what constant that means in order to derive the relation of ideal gas equation okay we cannot derive directly we have to derive in two steps one by con taking the consideration of temperature remain constant and another one is by taking the pre uh, pressure remaining what constant okay but 
What is our main part? That we change the volume from B1 to B2, pressure from B1 to P2, and temperature from T1 to what? T2. Whereas, I write down P2, comma, B2, and what? T2 are the what? Are the final what? Pressure. These are the final pressure, comma, volume, and what? Temperature. Final pressure, volume, and temperature. Often what guess? Ideal guess. But as I said, in order to derive the relation, we have to uh, do. Uh, we have to follow two two steps. Okay, one is at con constant temperature, one is at constant pressure. Now, in the first step, what I do, I consider the gas. I consider this same ideal gas. Okay, I keep the temperature of the gas constant, and that temperature is T one. Now I consider the temp in T1 is the initial temperature of the gas, but I consider the temperature of the gas that is T1 remain what constant. So keeping the temperature of the gas constant, the pressure of the gas I consider suppose the pressure of the gas that is P1 changes to P2. The gas changes pressure changes from P1 to what P2. And under this change in pressure from P1 to P2, I consider the volume also changes from say B1 to B dash. I'm just considering B dash, not directly to B2. Okay. So at constant temperature, that means pressure changes from P1 to P2 and volume changes from B1 to what? B dash. But this change which takes place between pressure and volume at constant temperature is basically under which law? Boyce's law. Because children, you have learned in class 9 that when we state Boyce's law, the temperature must remain constant. When the temperature remains constant, then the pressure of the gas, given mass of gas, is inversely proportional to the volume. That means pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other. But this is true at constant temperature. Constant temperature. So in the first step, we are keeping the temperature what? Constant. So means we are following which law? Boyce's law. So as for the Boyce's law, Initial pressure is P1, final pressure is P2. Initial volume is B1, final volume is B dash. So it means I write down B P B is constant. So now as for Boyce's law, P is proportional to 1 by B means P B is what? Constant. Now P into B is constant means P1 B1, the product of initial pressure and initial volume is equals to the product of final pressure and final volume. Now, what is the final pressure? P2. Now, what is the final volume I have assumed? B dash. So, the relation simply given uh, that, okay, uh, P1, B1 equals to P2, what? B dash. So, from here, I will make B dash as the subject. So, I write down now P1, B1 by P2. So, from Boyle's law, we got the final volume, and then this final volume is B dash equals to P1, B1 by P2. So let me just give this as equation 1. Now we do the second step in which the same gas, the same ideal gas, okay, the same ideal gas now has already acquired, okay, which has a temperature which is constant at that time also temperature T1, now it's also temperature T2, okay, changes to T2. Now this time the temperature remain, temperature changes. Now temperature will not remain constant, the temperature changes. But we change, keep the pressure constant. Now in the first step, temperature we kept constant. Now in the second step, now we keep the pressure what? Constant. The pressure what? Constant. Now see, in the first step, the pressure changes from P1 to P2. Now for the second step, the pressure is already what? P2. Now this pressure remains what? Constant. The pressure remains what? Constant. So when the pressure remains constant, definitely the temperature of the gas changes from T1, it was T1 and out here also T1, changes to T2. The T2 is the what temperature? Final temperature. But due to the change in pressure, uh, temperature, sorry, in this of this ideal gas in the second step, the volume also changes. Volume also what changes? Now what is the volume which was acquired by this gas in the first step? B dash. B dash. Now this volume B dash now will change to B2. Now B2 is the final volume of the gas. When the pressure remains what? Constant. So when the pressure P2 remains constant, so the temperature changes from T1 to T2 and volume changes from B dash to what? B2. 
So under this case, we follow which law? Charles law. So children keep just in mind that when the pressure remains constant means we follow which law? Charles law. So Charles law is always valid when the temperature pressure remaining what? Constant. Which means Charles law gives the relation between volume and temperature. And the relation is volume is directly proportional to temperature. Volume is directly proportional to what? Temperature. So if volume is directly proportional to temperature, okay, then I can even write B by T. Volume by temperature also remain what? Constant. The product of B by T always equals to constant. Because you know when proportion sign is removed to equals to sign, you have to put constant into T. That's why B by T. This T if I bring the denominator, so B by T remain constant. Okay, so that means in Charles law, B by T is always constant, which means, which means, B dash the initial volume, okay, by initial temperature that is T one, is equals to B two final volume by final temperature that is T two. So I just follow the statement. B by T constant means B dash initial volume by initial temperature is equals to final volume by final temperature. So children, from this relation, I can make B dash again as a subject. So B dash equals to B2. Now this T1 will go in the numerator. B2 T1 by T2. So let me just give this as equation 2. So children, you can see there are two uh, equations which I formed from step 1 and step 2. One is equation 1, equation 2. But both the equations, if you see, we have made B dash as subject. Means this is your left hand side. So if I compare equation 1 and 2 both sides, then left hand side, left hand side equal means right hand side, right hand side is also equal. That means I just compare equation 1 and 2 both sides. So children, if I compare equation 1 and 2 both sides, so I can write the equation as P1, B1 by uh, B1 by P2, okay, equation 1 of right hand side equals to T1, B2 by what? T2. Okay, which means I can write the same expression as P1, B1 by this T1 I'll bring in the left hand side. So collecting all T1 terms, uh, one parameter terms in the left hand side. Then P2 will go this side. So P2, B2 by, there's already T2 on the right hand side. So P1, B1 by T1 equals to P2, B2 by T2. So all the three parameters can be written by the relation. That is P1, B1 by T1 equals to P2, B2 by what? T2. Which means P, B by T is constant. So children look at this relation now. So by combining two laws, that means Boyle's law and Charles law, okay, in two steps, we got the relation that is PB by T is what? Constant. So if PB by T is constant, means, I write on PB equals to the constant into T. Constant into what? T. Now I write this constant, okay, I write this constant now by symbol K. So PB by K, I write on K as a constant into t so pb equals to kt where this k is what constant this k is what constant so the relation this particular relation is for a given mass of a gas where k is constant for a given mass of gas but varies with the volume of the gas okay volume of the what gas and children this particular relation is true for a given mass of gas okay but if we take, if we take one mole of gas, one mole, or also called as one gram molecules, one gram what? Molecules, which is also equals to the what? Molecular weight of the gas, or that is what, if you take one mole or one gram molecules of the gas, then PB can be equals to RT. I'm writing PB equals to RT. That means I replace this K by, by R, another symbol that is called what? R. Now this is a constant and this constant is called universal gas constant. This R is called what constant? Universal gas constant. That means the ideal gas equation for one mole of gas can be even written by the relation PB equals to RT. PB equals to what? RT. Where R is the symbol we have used, capital R, and this capital R is actually called as what? A universal gas, gas constant. But this is true for one mole of the gas. This is for what? One mole of the gas. But if there are n number of mole of the gas, if there are what? 
n molecules of the gas or there are n mole of the gas n mole of all what gas ideal gas and children we are dealing with what gas ideal gas then i write on p b equals to n r t i write on p b equals to what n r t and this equation is also called as ideal gas equation ideal gas what equation and you know this equation we have already used in the chapter called thermodynamics okay but the relation that we derive is by combining boyle's law and charles law so what is the ideal gas equation for n mole of the gas p b equals to n r t when n is the number of moles this is the number of mole of the gas or also called one gram molecules or uh, gram molecules of the gas okay and you know according to avogadro's according to avogadro's you have learned in chemistry 22.4 liter 22.4 liter of any gas any gas okay is comprises of equals to what 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of the gas 22.4 liter of any gas consists of how much 6.02 the 22 molecules of the gas and this particular number is exo known as what number avogadro's number this is also known as what avogadro's number okay and you know avogadro's number is always symbolized with capital n capital n is the symbol of avogadro's number which means the mass of 22.4 liter of any gas is equals to the molecular weight of the gas in gram so 22.4 liter of any gas has certain mass and the mass of 22.4 liter of any gas is equals to what gas equals to what molecular weight of the gas weight of gas and this molecular weight of that ga gas in gram is also equals to 1 mole of the gas that is equals to 1 mole of the gas that's what you need to keep in mind children that 1 gram molecules or 1 mole of the gas okay whose mass in gram is actually equals to the molecular weight of the what gas that's why 1 gram molecules is also called 1 mole of the gas now the relation which i have already derived that is pb equals to nrt is called what gas equation ideal gas equation also called what perfect gas equation but children remember this this equation has been obtained by using the gas law and as the gas law is strictly true only for what ideal gas ideal gas only that's why this particular relation is strictly true only for what gas ideal gas that's why this equation is also called ideal gas or also called perfect gas equation so children i have just uh, uh, derived the expression uh, exp uh, expression of ideal gas equation now there are other topic to discuss and that you learn in the next youtube video